วัสดีครับ Welcome to episode two of Thai League Central. Today on our show, of course, we have Gian Op as well as Paul. Now we'll give you all the recaps. There is you don't want to miss on Match Day five as well as preview you all the games coming up this weekend for Match Day six. Lots to discuss, lots to analyze as well. Many things went on since we've met last week to preview for you Match Day five. Anyways. I'll ask my guests how they're doing today. Yen, you first. Yeah, it was uh, great to be back. I couldn't enjoy them because I was down with food poisoning on the first weekend back, so none of the games really were enjoyable because I was in too much discomfort. But, I mean, hopefully next weekend I'll get back to you know being in the stadium as well and soaking in the atmosphere. Now moving on to Op, you weren't sick, obviously. How was the experience of watching live Thai league football again? It was extremely refreshing to have football back, and I thought the game between um, Police t e r o and Port FC was it was fantastic until the final three minutes, which I mean, we l we'll, we'll, we'll go we'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah, of but, yeah, course. But a great weekend of football. Yeah, a great weekend. Yeah, great weekend. Port hosting Police t e r o didn't quite pan out the way we expected, but I mean, oh well. Some some little little issues happening with the return of Thai League. Last but not least, Paul, glad that you are doing well. How's your weekend? Well, I mean, the, the drama all started on Friday, of course, uh, with the the COVID uh, revelations, and that sort of that sort of tripped up our plans uh, for the weekend. So um, it's. Uh, I mean, obviously, those two big games getting cancelled was a bit disappointing because they were the, they were the standout matches of the weekend with Buriram BG and Bangkok United going to Rajaburi. But I really, I really enjoyed the the Port um, Tarot game. I thought it was really absorbing. It wasn't it wasn't a classic in terms of quality, but I just thought the um, it, it always held your attention for various reasons. Mm. And really, really impressed with Tarot for 80 minutes. They they they, they were tiring at the end. <laughs> Port, the, the lights came out just in time, probably for them, because it looked like Port might grab a winner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely the scenes there. Of course, we just got the official confirmation coming this afternoon that Port have lost that game 2 0 n So Police Tarot will get the win there. A very, very important away win that puts them in a, a great position. If you were to ask me, because who would have expected? Police t e r o to be in seventh place, three wins already for them, including that one over the weekend at Port. Now, lots to talk about last weekend. Of course, the games that we previewed for you, unfortunately, none of them actually finished, and two of them didn't even actually happen. So we can't really talk much about them. But from from a big picture, from a big picture, I just want you know your thoughts and opinions overall. Op seems to be smiling. Uh, I mean, yeah. What, what do you want to add? Nah, I predicted that t e r o would win the game. <laughs> ah, yes, technically, yes, they did. did. You did. Yes, you technically, did. they did. You're the only so, person. Yes. <laughs> the only person to come away with the the correct predictions. There. I, I think. I think yeah, Ob yeah, turned off the lights because he wanted his prediction to be right. I blame <laughs> Ob for the floodlight scandal. Um, you have to. I, you I, I was on the suspect list. I, I was right. I predicted a draw. I was robbed. <laughs> so, I'm so putting up, off on this aspect. Up, Rob Paul. Up, Rob Paul. Right there. Yeah, exactly. Daylight yeah. robbery. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. back back on topic here. Lots of things to talk about other than the three games that we predicted. I mean, so many storylines happening. Paul, I want to start with you. What was the the key thing that stood out to you the most about Match Day Five? Uh, a particular team, particular player. What were you impressed about? And on, I guess what were you not as impressed about? Um, well, Terro. I mean, Terro Port was. I mean, well, Port Terro was the game that really um, caught my attention for various reasons, and I think the the performance of Patom c h i r u n r a t a n a p i r o m Great, was, great, a great, appro- great pronunciation. A great a round of applause. For you. Round of applause. Um, I thought his his performance was a bit of a revelation. He's one of those players that's been around for quite a while. I think he's 26 n o w He's mm. got talent. But I, I don't think I think everyone not, really noticed him last. The way he drove at the defence, uh, and you know his confidence he had, shooting from distance, um, 
if he can keep up that form, people were already mentioning a, a national team call up. I think it's way too soon for that. But um, that was a that was a real um, revelation for me in some ways. I've seen the guy play before, but I haven't seen him make an impact like that on a game. I don't mm. think. Mm. Um, and the opposite end of the scale, uh, a lot of a lot of discussion after the game about Nelson Bonilla's performance. Um, he did have some nice touches. He, he, you know, he set up a couple of chances, but he didn't look fit as many people thought would be the case. Um, and he was taken off after an hour. And the, the question is now, it, was he gaining match fitness or was he not ready to start? Now, we can only speculate on that based on what we saw. Um, but it was an interesting discussion after the game about whether, he should, whether or not he should have been starting at all. Mm, yeah, definitely, definitely. Lots of drama to still talk about regarding the, the way that Port has dealt with their foreign players. And I, I like to add on to your point, but home potent, my goodness, the, the, the way he played in that game, going from deep, receiving the ball, creating all types of chaos uh, for, for Port's defense. I, you know, he's, he's got a very interesting career, signed way, way back in 2012, Wood Mung Tong. Of course, he's been jumping around to so many places, went to Patia as well, went to Chiang Rai, and now at Police Hero. So he's, he's gone under the radar for most of his career, but hey, it's never too late to finally get back on track. We've seen so many Thai players peak at late ages, you know, 27, 28, 29. And maybe this is the season for him to pick things up. And, and, and Police Terra, a wonderful team to be able to do that with such a great manager. They play so well in the middle of the park with all the Thai young talents. They mix it up quite well with the, the more experienced players as well on their side. So I'm, I'm very excited to see how he does uh, long term wise now, Gian. I know you weren't feeling well, but uh, what, what's your what's your feel on the overall games played? Who stood out? Who didn't? Which games do, do you uh, want to focus on? So on the port game, the thing that stood out to me is how deep Haberty played, and you know, I've been watching Haberty for quite a few you know seasons now because he was at Mung Tong. Of course, he was here all the way back when he was at Ratchaburi. He's been in Thailand for many years. And he consistently plays best when he is able to focus on just receiving the ball in dangerous areas, driving through at the goal and scoring. And he, he can create, and he knows he can create, but I think that to put that kind of energy into trying to be the creative player and the goal scorer, he's got to pick one or the other. He can do both in that poor team. He's trying to do both. And I think he needs to start, because before... Um, before Gamma came to Mung Tong last season, uh, when Mung Tong were coached by uh, Yoon Jong Hwan and by Rod, he would drop so deep. And I think he scored three goals in 13 games before Gamma came. Uh, and when Gamma came, his game was different. His game was, you're going to sit, stay in the danger areas, exploit the spaces, you know, use that quick feet to get in the box and score. And, he's there to score goals. Right? He's there to, to, to put the finishing touch as goal or an assist every time. And the more he, I think it's a choice to play like this from Herbert. You know, I think, I think he's trying to play more deep. Uh, and I, I just think I, I can't understand why because mm. this court's midfield is stacked in itself. Port has so many creators who can pick that final pass. who can get the ball in the final third. I don't see why Herbert thinks it's his responsibility to do that. And yeah. that was a big reason why Port, weren't so you know what there was no cutting edge to port uh against tarot and another you know interesting game was moon tong against Sigotai and that goal from ibsen Mello to just oh pick my up the goodness ball in his own half oh and just goodness. drive at everybody beat the entire moon tong defense and score i mean ibsen is a fantastic player i think he's gonna have another good season yeah I mean, that goal from Ibsen Mello, the sequence leading up to that goal was insane yes. because Mung Tong had a corner at the other end. In swinger comes, cleared off the line, and, you know, the, the, the keeper who, you know, Peter Pong, what an amazing game he played that one, lobs it all the way over. And then Ibsen Mello takes it, takes, you know, matters into his own hand, dribbles all the way back, solo goal, great finish, and Sukotai come away. Victorious in that one first time they beat SCG Mung Tong 
as well. So wonderful, wonderful night for Sugotai fans. Now, Op, last but not least, biggest takeaway from this past weekend, which game, which tactical ideas were you amazed by, which <laughs> not so much? Uh, tactically, I was quite impressed with Chiang Rai. They were boring, by the way. They were, they were boring, but efficient. Okay. Um, again, you could read about that and we'll add mm. Thai League Central and we'll, we'll, we'll drop a link somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> um, she, she, no, Chiang Rai was... They, tactically, they were disciplined as we would expect them to be. But then again, you could see that they really came up front. The, the club seems to, you know, they haven't replaced um, William um, Enrique, who left. Um, but you up, who, who lost to Chiang Rai 1 0. They, they look like they'll be in trouble this season. And uh, another, another, another game, I, another team I really impressed was, was uh, Supan Ruri FC. Yes. Especially. Yes. Yes, Eliandro, the, the big Brazilian striker who, who set up two goal. Uh, I, I was looking to forward to see how, how, how he performs in, in real matches, and he didn't disappoint at all. He didn't disappoint. So, yeah, yeah, you did mention, you did mention in the last history. podcast, you mentioned in the last podcast how you were, you know, seeing Eliandro score goals for fun, for friendlies with Supanburi, first game. I mean, that, that second goal that he, he laid it off to Kassidi Wethaewong, who calmly takes it down on his left, beats one defender, sort of, you know, fades away from the other one and finishes clinically. Supan Marie, they're, they're up in fifth place. They are a team that you don't want to sleep on right now because this, this was a team that many people saw being dead and buried. Last season, they were not doing well at all towards the end. And, okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. The teams they beat are, of course, you know, Prachu Rayong as well as uh, Nakhon Rasima. So they've, they've not been anyone special yet. They did get a, uh, an away draw at Chiang Rai early on before, before COVID happened. So still, lots of different things could happen to Supanburi, but a phenomenal start. If, if you were a Supanburi fan and I told you, hey, earlier in this season, you're going to be finishing in fifth place after five games – with three wins in a row, you'll take that any day of the week. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. that's yeah. all the recap for Match Day 5. We're going to now move on to Match Day 6, of course. Seven games to be played this week. And, of course, the, the Bui Ram game is still not being able to uh, take place because of the, the COVID concerns. So, that game will not be happening while for this week, we have three games on Saturday, the ones that we will preview for you, and then four more happening on Sunday. Let's begin. We talked a lot about the Teros. They'll be hosting Rachaburi Midpoint, who were supposed to kick things off against True Bangkok. Unfortunately, that didn't happen last week. So let's get to the preview of this one, a 5.45 p.m. kickoff. Paul, you'll try to be there for this one. I hope they'll let you in. What do you expect from this game? Yeah, this is this is a this is a very tough one uh, because obviously we've seen Terrell uh, how they played last week. Um, Rajabri coming in a bit cold; they they missed last week because of COVID. And I think we're, if Terrell can repeat a similar performance, now I saw Terrell against Buram six months ago, and they they were it was a similar case again as the as the performance last week at Port. They had a great intensity about them. They will harry people in midfield. Um, the ball players that Rajabri have can expect to, to be under pressure um, if Terrell can maintain those levels of intensity. Um, obviously, there's concerns if Isaac Honey is injured. Uh, he uh, makes a big part of the Terrell central defence. It'll be interesting to see if, if the Malaysian Dominic Tan gets a chance in there. Mm, mm. Uh, but yeah, Rajabri will be keen as well because they, they'll be coming hope they've got their 100% record. Yeah. And they've got, as we've, we, we talked about last week, they've got a lot of flair on their side uh, that can hurt anyone, uh, any one of the top sides, never mind Tero. So it's, it's a tough one for me, really, because um, I think the, 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 two teams, the two teams could cancel each other out a little bit. 
and I'm definitely going for a draw in this one. Ah, okay, um, okay. Based on, based on, I think Terra will, will will probably be up for it again, but I think Rajaburi will really be keen to to match them. I, I'd say a, a scoring maybe two two draw. All right, all right. Sitting on the fence for that one. I'm going to move on to Op now. You're very impressed. You're you're talking to me during the game about how you're so impressed with the the youngsters, the way Tero play. It's a big test for them this weekend because Rachuri, they're fit, they're ready to go. Might be a little rusty because they they haven't had that first game that they they were looking for. But how do you see this one playing out? Well, it's going to be an, another tough game for for Police Tero, and I don't think they're going to make it out of this. This game, I think Rajaburi could just about edge it because I think when it comes to individual quality, Rajaburi is up, up there with the best. And unlike Port FC, they've they've been really consistent in terms of keeping their their, their core players, like we've already said last week. Mm-hmm. And I think with because last week when when we when we spoke last week, we were worried that Rajaburi. Foreign player they didn't have time to, I mean, like train. But now they've, you know, got an extra week to train, and I yeah. think that could benefit them. So yeah, I think I could see Rajabri winning, like just one goal margin win. Yeah, the 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 foreign players are all back for Rajabri. New signing as well, Justin Bass, the Filipino. Um, yeah, so like 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 you mentioned. Foreign players is going to play a very key role in this one. Long Jill is still leading the assists for Thai League this season with five. He's sitting there on top. Gian, Paul went with a draw. Op went with an away win for Rajaburi. Where do you see this one? Well, it, it is really tough. And, you know, speaking of foreign players, don't forget that Terra only played with two foreigners uh, on the pitch in their last game when they were both central defenders. They mm. were missing... Samare, they were missing, you know, Mark Landry, who they just signed, and Greg Hula, who was, you know, apparently still in quarantine and coming back. But if they get two of them back, two of them on the pitch for the Rajaburi game, plus Atit, who was ineligible because he's on loan from Port, they could look even stronger next weekend uh, than they did this weekend. So I, I, I'm a, I was tempted to go for a Tarot win, but I think, I think a score draw makes sense. Yeah. Okay. A score draw. Two, two people going for a draw. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up here. I'm going to go with you. I think Rachaburi, they're too hot to handle right now, even though they didn't play in the first game. I, I just feel like there's something about them this season that makes the team that they are playing against find it difficult to, to earn a point away from there. Just, they're just so clinical in front of goal. And there's so many options they can bring off the bench. The, the wing players are strong. The, the core midfielders are good. The strikers... They're all proven talent. So I'm going to go uh, with a Ratchaburi win. I don't think it's going to be uh, uh, completely lopsided, but I think I'm going to, it's, it's going to be close, but I'm going to stick with the away side for this one. Let's go now to the second game happening on Saturday night as well. This one, a 7 p.m. kickoff. Hopefully the lights don't go off in this one because Port hosting <laughs> BG, um, like we all knew, this past afternoon, the it's it's official now that they've lost. They've had to pay that fifty thousand baht fine. Mm, I you know, so many things that you can talk about in terms of port last game not doing well. But I, I want to shift the attention now to BG a little bit. So I'm going to begin with you up. How ready do you think BG are? Completely Ooh. new players in the, the, the spine of the side, how will they gel together? And do you think they can take down Port in a very, very big game this weekend? Uh, I, think, I think it's going to be... I think BG is... How do we say? The, the smaller team going into to this game. I think Port's home advantage. Uh, I think playing at home, I think Port's going to... It's it, 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 of course they're gonna have an advantage there. Uh, I, 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 again, that striker situation with BG. I don't think, I don't think, it, I don't think that the the work in a training ground would improve or, or solve that that issue. I think it's a, it's it, it's you no, know, it's you know it's a selection issue. 
And despite Port FC having defenders, so many defenders injured, for example, Adison, Pobrat, the Daniel defenders, Thai, Thai international Suzuki, Suzuki Cup winners, he's out. Elias Dolo is out as well. And Tanabun is out. So that's three big names out. Still, I think Port FC is so dangerous on the break and they could hit, hit BGs who, who will go there and, and try to be proactive. They will, BG will try to attack, but they, they wouldn't have the ammunition to, to hurt Port. And yeah, it's going to be a tough game and Port's going to win. I could see Port winning. Okay, going with the home side there. It's a big four clash. I mean, two of these teams are teams that have not lost yet this season. There are four teams that haven't lost, and these are two of them going against each other. So there's there's something to to there's definitely something to to be lost here if you don't come away with all three points. Now, Gian, I want to shift to you now. BG, good signings. Some say you know it it might change the way they play a little bit. Some say they'll just fit in right where they're supposed to. How do you see this one ending up? I mean, it's a, it's a repeat of the preseason friendly we saw between these two teams. Uh, while that was a bit of a strange one because the, the, both teams rotated and played their reserves, from what we saw, you know, I thought BG looked more organized than Port and more sort of coherent than Port. And that hasn't, that hasn't changed. I mean, Port haven't exactly shown themselves, you know, they haven't shown the best of themselves over the past weekend. Uh, and I think it's a strange case because the teams are opposites, right? I mean, Port looked pretty vulnerable at the back with Ardola and Rochella, uh, but they're great going forward, whereas BG, you know, don't have a focal point, but are excellent at the back. So I'll go with a tight game. I think a, I think a narrow, narrow Port win okay. seems reasonable. So, so two for Port. Paul, are you going to make it three for Port or not so fast? BG might earn a point. Uh, I'm going to go with Port as well for a narrow, a narrow win. Um, I think they're having lost the, all three points last weekend. I think there's there's a lot for them to lose if they drop more points. Mm. Um, and as as I, I don't want to repeat what everyone else has mentioned, but the 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 lack of of attacking power for BG could be their downfall. They'll they really need goals from midfield. Um, I'd love to see Siroch. Uh, given a chance, uh, <laughs> with with Port being being weakened in defence, uh, I'd like to see him given a chance up front, see what he can do. I, I still think there's a player in there that hasn't been given the right coach, perhaps, or the right position, and I think he, there's still a chance that he could be a centre forward that scores goals. Um, but he's got, and this is maybe an opportunity when when BG don't have a clear option there. And stick him in, see how he does. I'm sure he'll certainly give the Port defence something to think about. He is good running at, running at players, pulling them out of position. I think BG should should try that. But uh, I think Port, despite people saying that it didn't play, play particularly well last week, on another day, Suarez, Heberty are going to get a couple of goals each. And I think they will, they will have the chances and, and they'll get a couple of goals at least this time. All right, so three for Port. I'm going to make it four for four. I'm going to go with the home side as well. As long as the floodlights don't go off, Port's going to win this one. I think that there's just so many options going forward. I think BG's defense is solid. It's stacked. But another problem that people, or I mean that you guys haven't mentioned, is the goalkeeping situation for (laughs) BG. I don't trust Chachai. I don't trust him in goal, whether it's, passing it out from the back, whether it's, it's confidence, catching, all that stuff. I just feel like if there's Heberty, if there's Bonilla, if there's Suarez, when they get that half chance, they're going to finish it off. They might not have finished it off last weekend, but this weekend they're going to take care of things. Madame Bang said last week she apologized for what happened. They're going to go again, and this weekend they're going to go again. So I'm going to go with Port. So 4-4 four for four there for Port. Last but not least, the last game we have – on Saturday, we're going to preview this one for you. Drew Bangkok United back in action, and they will be facing Soup Hanbury. It's an 8 p.m. kickoff a little later. So this one, of course, at Tamasat. Drew Bangkok, man, <laughs> very, very unfortunate for them not to feature last week. 
Supan Marie, we saw and we were very impressed from what they displayed. I'm going to begin with you, Guillen, for this one. Are you going to go with the home side or do you think Supan Marie's got something up their sleeves? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the home side. You know, I think BU uh, did look very strong before the break. They've been training for 13 weeks consecutively. Uh, they're, they're probably very fit. I mean, they're disappointed they didn't get to kick off their adventure last weekend, but I'm sure that the momentum, you know, Mano will keep momentum going. And, yeah, I think Supan Buri looked good, looked solid defensively. They will not have Supan Tong Song, if I'm correct, because he got yeah, injured in the they, last they won't have him. They won't have him. Yeah, so I think all those factors combined, I think it's a BU win. Okay. Um, pretty pretty con- uh, confident answer there, a BU <laughs> home win against Supan Buri. Paul, what about you on this one? I'm sure that True Bangkok, they've got lots of things to – Prove this season so many close calls in the past few years will this be their season but before there will this be the game that they win I think you have to go with Bangkok United for this one uh, despite Sipambury's form three wins in a row obviously remembering two of those wins came six months ago uh, <laughs> and they, they, had, they had those clean sheets as well so they've not conceded a goal in three games which is impressive by any standards but they have been up against fairly weak opposition and Bangkok United will be a very different proposition for them to handle. Much more fluency, much more flexibility across the team in the way they interchange positions sometimes. They've got a lot of width usually, and I think Sapambri will struggle to cope with that. Uh, I think this could be a big season for Anon, um, Amor Laird Sack. Uh, mm. in the, I think, I'm not sure about the fitness levels of, of the foreign players at the moment. I know they're, they're back in, in Thailand, but... I think we'll be looking to him a lot to, to make things happen for them. And don't be surprised to see him come up with a couple of goals or assists at the weekend. So, yeah, I'm firmly with uh, Bangkok United for this game. All right. Two for true Bangkok. Op, are you going to make it true as well and go with <laughs> Bangkok United? Um, with Supan Tong Song. If Supan was fit and available, I could see it being a draw. But without uh, their captain, the great Supan Tong Song, I think it's gonna be a, a a win for the home team. So yeah, it's I'll I'll make it true for for Bangkok United. <laughs> now, be, be, but like, yeah. yeah, I mean like, and plus, since two thousand and fifteen, mm. last season, so two two thousand nineteen, um, Bangkok United have played Supan Buri ten times, and Supan have not have yet to, to beat Bangkok in that in those ten games. Mm. Um, they've lost six and and drew four of those. So I think that's the stats are pointing towards a, a win for, for BU. And I, I, I do agree with Paul. Um, it's gonna be a big big year for Anon Amon Lersa. And and in and in this game when you when you see Supan there aside who defend well and I think Anon's ability to play in tight spaces, I think there'll be a key. He'll be the key to unlock the defense. So, yeah, but, um, again, Bangkok win for sure, this one. Okay, yeah, be, I was sorry to interrupt you there. I was going to say, uh, before, uh, before I, I let you go, this game, the way that I want to ask you, particularly, Op, the way that Supanburi defend, oh, they, they're not going to have their, their, their captain, but still, the way they defend, how do you think True Bangkok will break that down? Is it going to be through balls? Because is it going to be the pace? Is it going to be by you know just knocking it around with the way they keep possession? How do you think True Bangkok is going to break Supanbury down, who've not conceded for a while now? I think the key for Bangkok win this game is to be patient with the ball. Don't they can they can be you know, trying to play those Hollywood passes, diagonal balls from left to right. No, 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 no. You, you got to keep it short, keep it quick, and maybe draw the Sufan defense forward. So, you know, it's like, what is it? What's the phrase again? I can't remember. Like, a donkey and a carrot. You know, use that ball to draw their, their, their forward after the ball and then play those <laughs> vertical pass. And that's how you get through, you know. So, yeah, they can do it. They can do it. They, they do have the players and they... The Manos team, though, I think they believe in the, that philosophy of play. 
All right. It's, yeah, it's, it's I, I agree. I agree with all three of you. I think I'm going to keep it nice and short. True Bangkok coming back. It's a season that they've, they're, I've not seen them this ready in a long, long time. I think the perfect start, they'll continue to that. We're going to have two perfect teams remaining after this week because I've gone with Rachibri as well and True Bangkok to pick up wins. So, yeah, that's it for the big three preview this week. Now, we do have four other games happening on Sunday. Gian, are you going to be watching any of those ones as well? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be at Mentong for their match against uh, Smooth Pagan. Uh, interesting to see, you know, Ishii's football live for the first time. I, I really enjoyed watching Smooth Pagan last year under Murayama because, you know, they, they played a lot of exciting attacking football, very, you know, adventurous game. I, I think Smooth Pagan haven't been as adventurous this year. I, I see them as more pragmatic. It's a, a bit more boring than last year, but I, I see that game ending in a draw. You know, I think Smith Prakan will, will be able to pick up the point just by being solid. And yeah. yeah, two sides not really happy where they are uh, on the table. Up, other than that Mung Tong game, what other Sunday games do you think will have an interesting storyline when it's all said and done? Um, I think Chonburi visit to PT Bajua would be a fun game. Bajua not having a good time at all. And Chonburi, they are quite an unpredictable side. When they're good, they're good. When they're bad, they're bad. And whenever they play, you can expect them to con- either concede or score. Uh, I'm looking forward to see how the two of Chonburi's young sir perform. The first is Chanarong Pomsi Gao. Mm. So this guy, for those of you who don't know, he's, he's a Thai international. He, he plays for the other 19s team, a left-footed white winger, and he's good in short spaces. He, he, he's the all-round technical attacker, modern attacker you, you, you dream of to have in your team. And the other guy is their left-back, Chat Mongkhon Leung Ratanarod. Chat Mongkhon Leung Ratanarod. Okay, that's a difficult <laughs> name for a Thai, Thai guy to say. But again... Excellent player. Same gener- he's in the same generation as as um Supernat mm. And um last last weekend against um Thad FC, it was his cross that led to um Moskowitz goal. He's got yeah. a great left foot. And if he if he, and he's only I think oh how old is he? Nineteen, I guess. Eighteen or nineteen. Regardless. A great talent and I, I, I want to see how, how he continues to develop. So, yeah. All right. Last but not least, Paul, which Sunday game for you will you be watching on the telly at home? I think Nakon Rajasima Chiang Rai United looks interesting. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they're finally going to be back in their own stadium. For the uh, first time, yes. This season, yes. And unfortunately, they won't have their fans with them. But they've had a poor start to the year. Or, I mean, four losses in five games. Um, I just wonder if they can turn their form around now that not, there's no travel for them. It's a bit of a journey for Chiang Rai United to make down there. They've been patchy this season. They've not looked like the same team that won the league. Um, but let's, I mean, I think Ekinit Panya um, could be ready to make an impact. There were signs last week a couple of times, and I think that's the big danger mm. for Najasima. But I, I think... Um, they really need the point. The SWAT cats really need the points. Uh, I think I think that could be a draw as well. All right. Well, there we have it. All the recaps for Match Day Five, as well as the preview for this week's Match Day Six. Of course, we'll keep you all up to date on Thai League Central. Make sure that you tune in for that as well. Till next time, peace. <laughs>